is James Gunn. I am the writer and director of the new movie, The Suicide Squad, and I'm here to talk about the trailer. Robert Dubois. He's in prison for putting Superman in the ICU with a kryptonite bullet. I'm not joining your suicide squad. So yes, Bloodsport is in prison for uh, putting Superman into the uh, ICU with a kryptonite bullet. Yes, the Suicide Squad is a part of the DCEU, but uh, I don't know which Superman it was because I don't cast the next Superman. So uh, it could be Henry, it could be somebody else. It's whoever people decide upon other than me. Hmm. Yeah, so the big, huge uh, American flag shot is based on the movie Patton, which I, I came up with while watching the movie Patton, surprisingly. And I knew it was a trailer shot from the time that I shot it. I had certain shots in the movie that I called diamond shots. Yes, this movie has a little bit to do with uh, the United States and our government and where we're at and what it means to be an American in the modern world and take advantage of so many other countries sometimes such as Corto Maltese. Although we don't really take advantage of Corto Maltese because the country doesn't really exist. Is this thing a dog? A dog? What co kind of dog do you think it is, mate? So my, here is uh, my brother Sean Gunn plays Weasel. And Weasel is one of my favorite characters. He's based on, in some ways, Bill the Cat from Bloom County, if people remember that cartoon character. And most of my uh, direction for Sean while playing, playing this character was, Imagine if they took a German shepherd and they threw him onto the ship and said, okay, now go go fight in this war and we're just going to throw you into the water. Um, unlike uh, Rocket or even Groot or other CGI characters I've dealt with, Weasel is barely more than an animal if that. And he doesn't know, has no clue what's happening around him. King Shark is a little bit smarter than Weasel, but that's not really saying much. He still is pretty monosyllabic, he's still a giant fish, like the human beings, and uh, doesn't think of much more than that, other than hoping that perhaps people will think he's smart and wanting to belong. This is suicide. Well, that's kind of our thing. You know, I knew early on that I wanted to have Garo be one of the primary antagonists of this movie. He's a character who I love from DC Comics. He is a giant walking pink and cerulean blue starfish. He's both utterly ridiculous and terrifying to me and has been terrifying since I was a very young person. Um, but I also think he goes along with what's happening in the rest of this movie. Is this isn't such a movie about good guys and bad guys. It's a movie about shades of gray. We have our much better characters, uh, such as Jacketter 2, who has a little bit more heart than some of the others. And then we have some of our much worse characters, like General Suarez, played by... Uh, by uh, Joaquin Casio. And then we have Starro, who, you know, although is a bad guy, you know, quote unquote, I do feel sorry for him. I have a lot of pity for Starro as he's being held in uh, Jotunheim. Starfish is a slang term for a butthole. If there's any connection. No. Hey guys, sorry I'm late. Had to go number two. Good to know. Of course, one of the many things that people asked me the most about the Suicide Squad before, you know, as soon as I was hired was, what is Margot going to wear? What is Scarlett Quinn going to look like? Are you bringing her red and black look into the movies? And so my answer was that, to that yes. But the truth is, is, I had a huge map of all the different looks of Harley Quinn throughout the years, various media. And one of them I liked the best was the Arkham Games look of Harley Quinn, and I probably like that one the best in the way. So her first look in the movie is based on that. And I knew I wanted to have something written on the back of her jacket, motorcycle gang style. And so that's where I came up with live fast, die clown. Although uh, there were some other options. We also made a jacket that said clown AF, and we had another jacket that said world's best grandpa. And it was between those three different jackets that we stood with that. And then her second look in the movie is this beautiful red gown, which we see in various stages of degradation throughout the film. Um, and I like it both as a full, beautiful gown, and I like it as it starts to get messed up. And I think it's kind of creating our own iconic look set that's different from the comics or the cartoon or anything else. 
I wouldn't take such extreme measures if this mission went more important than you could possibly imagine. Are you in or out? Bloodsport is a different character for me than a lot of characters I've worked with because the truth is, is I wrote this role for Idris Elba not knowing which character from the comics I was going to use to, to, to you know, was going to use. And I ended up using different characters, um, including a made up character. So what I did instead was I took one of the characters I liked in the comics by the name of Bloodsport. In the comics, his ability is to pull weaponry out of thin air. And the way we interpret that in this film is he has a costume that is covered with all these different gadgets that he uses, all this weaponry that are like these transforming pieces of weaponry. And then he has this sort of creepy look in his uh, helmet, skull helmet, which uh, which I liked a lot. So I fell in love with the design, even though it looks very different from what's for the comic suit, wears camo pants and a bandana. I'm gonna get you out of here alive. I'm going to get you out of here alive. Yeah, I would say that Daniela Melchior's character, Ratcatcher 2, is in a lot of ways the heart of the film. She isn't innocent compared to the rest. She's taken up the mantle of her father, the original Ratcatcher. Um, she controls rats like her father did, but she's also in prison for robbing a bank. Um, she isn't a murderer. She has never been a murderer, and almost all the rest of the Suicide Squad members are murderers for one reason or another. And I think what she brings out is this relationship between her and Bloodsport, which is very much a father-daughter relationship. Bloodsport has to go on this mission because of Amanda Waller threatening a, and he does not have a good relationship with his daughter. And through Daniela or through Ratcatcher 2, he starts to maybe soften a bit. And uh, and I think through the movie, we learn, you know, both, both of them have a very specific and special journey that works intimately off of each other. Yeah, I think that, you know, there is this moment between uh, Rick Flagg and Harley Quinn, and people will have to see the movie in which the context takes place. But what I can say is that it, these are two characters that have been through a lot together. And one of the first things Margot and I ever talked about was how she ended up, uh, if she likes most of the Suicide Squad members, but she sort of hates Rick Flagg because he's the opposite of what she thinks is cool. She likes weirdos. She comes into this situation and she thinks Weasel is great because he's just this oddball character. And she thinks of Rick Flagg as this uptight military man. The other thing I would like to mention is how important uh, this song is to me. It's a great song written by Grandson and performed by Grandson and Jesse Reyes, who are honestly two of my favorite artists today. And Grandson and I became friends through Twitter because he likes my films and I love his music. I used one of his songs in the movie um, and we started talking about it. And I said, hey, listen, I have a spot which I need a song written for because I can't find the right, the right song for that moment. I tried probably, oh my gosh, you know, 30 different songs, putting them in this one moment in the film and nothing seemed to work. And so I described to him what the situation was, what the movie was like, and he started sending me different ideas for songs. And one of the ideas was this song, Rain. It was a very early demo, but I just fell in love with the song and, and, and it really was something that I couldn't stop singing to myself, almost to the point of being irritated. And, uh, and I was so happy that he wrote the song for the movie. And then as a surprise to him, I started crafting this trailer around the song and then shared that with him. And the other weird thing about it is that Jessie Reyes has been one of my favorite artists and her song is also in the movie, which I don't even think she knew at the time when she went and started working with Grandson and doing this song. So it's just all these weird coincidences came together for this song, Rain, and I'm so excited and proud to be using it in the movie. Anyway, that's me, James Gunn, talking about the trailer of The Suicide Squad. I hope you guys can come and join us in a movie theater when it comes out on August 6th in the United States and a lot of different parts of the world. And uh, I see it on a view has been uh, meant to be seen. Thank you, guys. Time.